Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome each and every one of you to a Daniel Hayford's lecture. This lecture is the part one of two lectures on an overview of adolescence and reproductive health. You already know that the word pre-adolescence refers to the phase of human growth and development before the 10th year after birth. You also know that the term post-adolescence is the period or phase after the 19th year of birth. What then is the phase called adolescence? It should be obvious to you by now that adolescence is a period of human growth and development which occurs from or between the ages 10 years to 19 years after birth. This transition phase of human life can be divided into two main categories, namely early adolescence and late adolescence. The early adolescence is from 10 years to 40 years, whereas the late adolescence occurs from 15 years to 19 years. The adolescence phase can also be subdivided into three stages, namely early adolescence, which covers the ages 10 years to 14 years, middle adolescence, which spans the ages 15 years to 17 years, and the late adolescence, which covers the ages 18 years to 19 years. Ladies and gentlemen, adolescence also consists of preteens of ages 10 years to 12 years and teens of ages 13 to 19 years, with the teens themselves being made up of those who are referred to as being minors and therefore being of ages 13 years to 17 years and those who are considered to be adult teenagers and are therefore of ages 18 to 19 years. Of course, the latter is a legal way of viewing or classifying the adolescent people. Socially, it is only those who are 20 years and above who are considered to be adults. Thus, by social construct, an adolescent is a minor. The term young people is used to refer to people who are aged 10 years to 24 years, whereas the term youth is used to refer to humans who are aged from 15 to 24 years. In other ways, all those who are undergoing adolescence are young people, but it is only those who are 15 years to 19 years who are considered youth. The term adolescent refers to a human who is undergoing adolescence and therefore belongs to the age group 10 to 19 years old. Based on what we just indicated about adolescence, young people and youth, we can conclude that adolescents of the early adolescent are part of those who are referred to as being young people, but they are not regarded as being part of the youth. On the other hand, the adolescents of the late adolescents are considered to be part of the group called young people and those called the youth. These and other ways of classifying the adolescent population helps us to know that adolescents are not a homogeneous group. Instead, they are a diverse group or a heterogeneous group. Accordingly, the adolescents do not have the same needs. That is, there is a considerable diversity in the needs of adolescent people. An adolescent boy or girl who is aged in years from 11 to 12 may have needs which may be considerably different from another adolescent who belongs to the 18 to 19 year age group. Ladies and gentlemen, the adolescent people undergo significant physical, intellectual 
and psychosocial changes as they move into adulthood. There is some opinion divide on what the various societies around the world consider adolescence. Some societies do narrowly equate adolescence with puberty and the sequence of physical changes which end in reproductive maturity. Others expand the scope of adolescence to cover psychosocial, moral, and the physical aspect of maturation. Here, adolescence often covers the period between ages 12 years and 20 years and may equate teenage. It is characterized by considerable issues of emotional and physical separation from parents, physical and psychological transition, social constraint and restriction on physical movement per the expectations and requirements of the adult population, lack of meaningful responsibility, isolation from adults, and deviant behaviors. Did you know, gaining sound knowledge and understanding of these and devising the right way to handle them the best way possible is crucial because adolescence is an indispensable phase of human growth and development and adolescents of each human generation will end up becoming the adults of the immediate next generation. Should any human generation of adults fail to ensure availability of meaningful events and responsible guidance, for example, that very corporate adult generation, that adolescents they will fail to manage properly, and the subsequent generation or generations may suffer avoidable problems, and that may spell doom for humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, it is factual that adolescent people undergo three significant changes as they move into adulthood. These are 1. Physical changes, 2. Intellectual or cognitive changes, and 3. Psychosocial changes, which can be expanded to include psychological and social changes. In the process of moving from dependence on their own parents and other adult people towards independence, adolescent people tend to experiment and test limits whenever it is necessary for them to do so. And that include practicing significantly risky behavior or behaviors. This situation makes the adolescent population very vulnerable to several dangerous sexual and reproductive health problems. Dear friends of Daniel Hilford, all adolescent people and other young persons are not equally affected by negative sexual and reproductive health issues. There are considerable variations, for example, in gender, age, social cultural environment, etc. Therefore, adolescent sexual and reproductive health services delivery need to be planned and implemented in such a way that they get targeted towards the most vulnerable ones, especially adolescent girls in rural areas and orphans. Did you know the countries of the continent of Africa and other low and middle income countries are characterized by a population which is predominantly young. The proportion of adolescent people among the world's population is likely to grow considerably in the coming years due to the early marriage in some parts of the world, in addition to low levels of contraceptive use. All people of this world, especially the adult population, need to recognize and accept the fact that the adolescent population has the right to accurate information and appropriate sexual and reproductive health services. Fortunately, nowadays, there are 
national and international laws which protect adolescent adolescent rights or adolescent people rights fortunately nowadays there are national and international laws which protect adolescent people's rights an enforcement of such laws in the right way may go a long way to help in the achievement of the global goals ladies and gentlemen do you not think that it is time we address the key issues related to the vulnerabilities of the adolescent population their risk-taking behaviors and the kind of life skills which they need to help them to manage the challenges of adolescence certainly you would like us to explore the vulnerabilities risk-taking behaviors and life skills with reference to the adolescent population indeed the adolescents have physical social economic and emotional vulnerabilities which put them at risk of engaging in risk-taking behaviors which in one way or the other have considerable influence on their own sexual and reproductive health since adolescence is a period of rapid growth the nutritional needs of people increase when they reach adolescence in other ways the adolescents have relatively higher nutritional needs unfortunately this high demand for nutrition might be difficult to meet most especially if they have poor eating habits did you know poor nutrition can result in poor physical or sexual and reproductive health almost non-existent assertiveness and poor communication skills of the adolescent people unequal power relationships between the adolescent population on one hand and the adult population and the fact that adolescents lack the necessary maturity to make good rational decisions increase emotional vulnerability in adolescents furthermore there are so many adolescent people who are socio-economically disadvantaged to a very significant extent consequently they possess little negotiation power and have a high tendency of engaging in more hazardous conditions such as cohabitation prostitution or commercial sex work trafficking for sexual exploitation and many other kinds of exploitation dear friends of daniel he thought one of the critical risk-taking behaviors which are often shown by adolescent people are impulsive decision making which could lead to injuries provoking arguing and testing limits with peers and the adult population leading to a high tendency of emotional and physical damage or violence one one of the critical risk-taking behaviors which are often shown by adolescent people are impulsive decision making which could lead to injuries provoking arguing and testing limits with peers and the adult population leading to a high tend Density of emotional and physical damage or violence. Another critical risk taking behavior, which is noted among the adolescent population, is experimentation with unsafe substances such as hard liquor and illegal drugs the next notable risk-taking behavior of the adolescent is unplanned sexual activity which could lead to an unwanted pregnancy and peer 
of and, and perhaps infection with STIs, that is sexually transmitted infections. Did you know our adolescent people of Africa and other continents of the world do have considerable concerns which are related mostly to social relationships, self-perception, and the almighty gender rules? Adolescent boys, for example, attain more autonomy, mobility, and power, but the girls may get fewer of such privileges and chances in society. Ladies and gentlemen, assertiveness and rational decision making are some of the major life skills which the adolescent population throughout the world need to be assisted by the adults, mostly parents, teachers, and health workers to develop. Such assertiveness covers expressing beliefs, thoughts and feelings in a direct, clear way at a right time, while decision making in this context encompasses a group of opposite conclusions which are followed by appropriate and timely decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, you would like to hear about unwanted pregnancy and abortion. The truth or reality is that adolescent pregnancy is reportedly a common occurrence in human societies around the world. Another bitter truth is that a significant proportion of the adolescent pregnancies are unintended and therefore unwanted. Some may choose to ask what factors lead to unintended and unwanted pregnancies among the adolescent population. Dear friends of Daniel Hayford, Factors which lead to such pregnancies are unplanned sex and for that matter sexual intercourse without the availability of contraceptives, incorrect use of the chosen contraceptive method, not using contraceptives due to lack of information or unavailability, and so on and so forth. Although some adolescents choose to or are made to as, accept their unintended and unwanted pregnancies, one of the principal ways that the adolescent people handle their unintended and unwanted pregnancies is abortion. According to some authorities, abortion is the termination of a pregnancy before fetal viability, and that the fetal viability is often taken to be not up to 28 weeks from the last normal menstrual period. On the other hand, the World Health Organization defines abortion as the termination of a pregnancy, whether spontaneous or induced, before 22 weeks of gestation. Ladies and gentlemen, there is also what is called unsafe abortion, and that, is, and that one is defined as any process to terminate a pregnancy by persons lacking the proper skills and all is done in an unclean, non-medical place. Did you know biomedical complications which are reportedly associated with spontaneous or induced abortion constitute the fourth leading direct cause of the overall maternal death worldwide? Post-abortion care is introduced effectively to address such complications. It is a package of services offered to women after an incomplete abortion due to spontaneous or induced abortion. Generally, therefore, abortion can occur in two ways. It can occur on its own. That's number one. one. It can occur on its own. In this case, it is called spontaneous abortion or miscarriage. Number two, it can be induced deliberately by a healthcare professional or by a person who has not been trained and certified to do such a thing. In certain settings of the world, abortions are mostly spontaneous. Only few are induced. In other places, the proportion of induced abortion may be much higher than spontaneous ones and that most of them are not documented. Did you know those people who are expected and required to provide legal or permissible abortions include healthcare assistants and medical doctors?
On the other hand, abortion may be self-induced illegally by the adolescent person or by other persons in society. According to some sources, some of the items which are employed in unsafe abortion are plastic catheters, plastic tubes and pesiline, metallic rods, and roots of plants or herbs. Others list the procedures and technologies which are employed for such attempt to include manual or electrical vacuum aspiration, medication abortion drugs like mesoprostol and mefepristone, digital evacuation involving the use of bare fingers, forceps, as well as dilatation and curettage. Indeed, post-abortion care is a package of interventions which has been found to reduce abortion-related morbidity and mortality to a considerable extent when, available, when it is available and of good quality. Why do adolescents seek abortion? Ladies and gentlemen, adolescents seek abortion due to fear of dropping out of school, financial problems, fear about what others might think or say, lack of a stable relationship, and where the pregnancy is a consequence of non-consensual sexual acts like incest or rape. <coughs> Sorry. Under what condition is abortion adjudged Ill illegal? Dear friends, abortion may be deemed illegal. Ab abortion may be deemed legal. All right, so I beg your pardon. The question, under what condition is abortion considered to be legal? Okay, that's the question. Under what condition is abortion considered to be legal? Dear friends, abortion may be considered or may be deemed legal only under conditions like cases of rape, incest, fetal impairment, or if the mother's life or her child's life is in danger if she is not in position to bring up the child due to the fact that she is a minor, let's say less than 18 years old, or due to the adolescent having a physical or mental infirmity or illness. Ladies and gentlemen, a legal abortion is expected and required to be done only by certified medical doctors or certified healthcare professionals. Post-abortion care in a health facility involves Three important aspects of care. Such aspects of care are emergency treatment of abortion and potentially life-threatening complications which the adolescent girl involved may encounter, post-abortion family planning, counseling and services, and linking between post-abortion emergency services and other healthcare services. Post-abortion care for incomplete or unsafe or illegal abortion, on the other hand, focuses on five key elements. These elements are treatment and management of incomplete abortion and potential complications, counseling the girl involved, contraceptive and family planning services for reproductive and other health services, and five, community and post-abortion care service provider partnership to prevent complications of unwanted pregnancies and therefore unsafe abortions. Gratitude for participating in this lecture. We sure will meet in another session, which will constitute the part two. Great. Bye-bye.